Video games are lying to you. While throughout the years, many a character has been presented as a good soul with decent intentions, that's actually not true at all. In fact, even some of the most famous faces in gaming are actually horrible assholes that you just so happen to be in control of. There's long been a debate about whether you can separate the artist from the human. You better hope you're cool with that because some of the things these people have done and then you're celebrating with them when the end credits roll. If no one else is going to expose these twonks though, I shall do it and I shall do that right now. And I'm not talking about games like Lair on the PlayStation 3 when you do play the villain unknowingly. That dude wasn't bad, he was just a moron who got tricked into a pyramid scheme. It's the same with the GTA series. We all know those guys are bad before we've even hit play. That's just the nature of the franchise. I'm Simon Miller. This is seven good guys in video games who are actually evil monsters. Number seven, Mario. Yeah, that's right. Somebody had to say it. It had to be said. But when Mario first burst onto the scene, his whole existence was based on the idea that he had to save Pauline, his girlfriend, from a crazed ape. This was obviously Donkey Kong, who was literally trying to kill the Italian plumber. I mean, you ever been hit by an ever-increasing in-speed barrel? The best you're getting away with is a few broken bones. As it turned out, though, Mario was actually the asshole in this scenario. As confirmed by Shigeru Miyamoto in a 2016 interview, the reason Kong was so pissed off was because this dick in a red cap had held him in captivity for years. Sick of it, he escaped and stole his girlfriend Pauline in the process as an up yours. Now that wasn't the best idea. And if you think it sounds like another plotline featuring another huge ape, well, you're on the right track. What's worse is that at the end of the first Donkey Kong, Mario is successful, which leads to Donkey Kong Jr., where his own son is trying to free him again. Talk about screwed up. It got worse too, as this kid was forced into killing Mario, or at least that's what seems to happen at the end of the sequel. So next time you're all ready to crown Mario as some kind of hero, think twice like Celine Dion. There's also the issue of the original game's backstory. According to the instruction manual, the residents of the Mushroom Kingdom have been turned into the question blocks that are littered throughout the level. And what does Mario do? He slams his head into each one, in essence, killing these law-abiding citizens. Number six, that dude from Shadow of the Colossus. Wrongfully called Wonder after a Japanese translation error, the lead character in Shadow of the Colossus is pitched as a hero. He had traveled to distant lands in order to save his girlfriend, who does appear to be dead. Either that or she's half asleep, and if so, it makes him a dick. Before you do anything, try and wake her up. Such is his love for this person, though. He makes the journey and even agrees to slay 16 colossi who have literally done nothing to him. Not only that, but our leader obeys a mystery voice, even though he has no clue who that is. It's no surprise these beasts attack him either. He either runs up to them and stabs them in the leg or grabs hold of their hair and pulls on it for dear life. If you viciously attack a living creature, it will retaliate. That is Animal Logic 101. You find this out in the end too, when it turns out embarking on this challenge is your ultimate undoing. As soon as you've murdered these lovely creations, you yourself are dragged into the ether, probably now forced to roam distant lands until someone sticks a sword in your ass. You are not a good person here, even if the actions are justified from a certain perspective. You still go to mythical jail, and that is a deserved punishment. Number five, Darth Revan. Still the best twist in video game history, you spend hours in Knights of the Old Republic swung around thinking you're bringing balance back to the Force. You're the light side's last hope and if they lose you to the dark forces, that is that, the world is boned. As it turns out, it's you who are responsible for ruining it all to begin with. For those that do not know, halfway through KOTOR, you were thrown the biggest curveball when it turns out that Darth Revan, the worst plonker in all the galaxy who killed a lot of innocent people, is you. The Jedi's wiped your memory after successfully taking you captive, hoping to utilize the power in your hands for good. Up to this point, you have had plenty of opportunities to go against the grain anyway, but as soon as that nugget drops, you're able to go full on dick and just ruin anybody in your path. It's almost like playing a different game. You can do such a stark 180, and it all really is a work of art. Doesn't look good on you, but hey-ho, you should have thought about that beforehand, shouldn't you? If nothing else, KOTOR is the best Star Wars game ever made, and if you can handle the old school mechanics, you should absolutely go and play this now, even though I have spilt the twist for you. It's just that damn good, and I sit here waiting for Knights of the Old Republic 3. And no KOTOR Online, the Old Republic does not count. That was a part of ship. Number four, M. Bison. This doesn't work in the earlier games, and for a very good reason. M. Bison 
is a prick. He arranges the Street Fighter tournament to wipe out any would-be contenders so he can take control of the world. He's an insane megalomaniac with the only thing holding him back being his enemies. Fast forward a few years though and Capcom made the grand decision to allow the player to choose Bison, meaning if you did win the whole thing, you've just opened the door for this nightmare to start. You didn't think about that, did you? Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li all will be killed at his hands simply because you like to spam that annoying electricity move this guy can do. Couldn't you have just picked Blanca, a dude who is clearly desperately in need of some help? Nope, because you're a bad person and M. Bison is even worse. For shame. For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. You obviously get a free pass if you are a supporter of Bison's ways, but that also makes you a very disturbed person. You'll be in a James Bond film before you know it. Number three, Joel. Ah, The Last of Us. Generally one of the best games I've ever played, its highlight is that its main characters are their own people with their own thoughts and feelings. You just happen to be in control of them, and at no point is this more accurate than when you look at how Joel behaves at the end of the game. Despite taking Ellie under his wing, when Joel is tasked with the choice of giving her up to save mankind, something she's all for, or keeping her around to replace the memory of his dead daughter, well, good old Joel chooses the latter. Now this isn't a black and white decision which is one of the reasons all of this is so brilliant, but you are still pushing the buttons for a guy who has decided to serve his own interests ahead of the human race. Just think about that for one second. It's so well done when I first experienced it I went back and played the ending section, assuming there would be a branching path. There is not. Again, Joel is Joel no matter who you would like him to be, and you're left with this empty feeling that all hope is lost and that you are directly responsible. It's a far cry away from jumping on a flagpole and finishing a level. Although that is a Mario reference, and we all know about him now. Basically, everybody in games is a giant, giant moron. Number 2 Braid No one saw this coming and that is why it's so good. The simple platformer has you trying to save a princess from a fortress which is a tale as old as time itself. For the majority of the game too it seems as if the princess is trying to help you until one massive slap in the face wakes you up to reality. As it turns out the whole game has been playing out in reverse meaning not only are you stalking her but she's actively been trying to stop you. There is a theory that our main character is actually trying to make up for all this hence the reverse time mechanic but that doesn't mean he didn't do it to begin with. He did, and just because you wanted to see some Ed credits, you went along for the ride. You should be disgusted with yourself and know that I am disgusted with you too. I will say that it would be cool if more games could try and be as inventive as this one was, or failing that, just put me in the boots of a bald space marine and let me shoot aliens. I know we have 42,766 titles that do do that, but as long as the person I'm doing that with is like Marcus Phoenix, I am 100% Happy. Number 1. Viola Who the flub is Viola? I hear you cry. Calm down, I'm gonna tell you. It is a good question though and comes from a game you're probably only aware of if you're familiar with the usual YouTubers who made it part of their Let's Play series a few years back. Known as The Witch's House, you will not find a more screwed up game. At start, it all seems so simple. Viola is trapped in a creepy house and needs to escape. She's also being chased by a witch named Ellen, and that's bad news all round. Obviously, the clock is ticking. When you finally do get out, however, you get hit in the face with a fish. I don't mean that literally, that wouldn't be that bad at all. Because as it turns out, the whole time you've actually been in control of Ellen, who had switched bodies in some kind of dark ritual. This would be bad enough, as the sweet Viola is trapped inside, but if only it ended there. Instead, just as the game is finishing up, Viola's dad hunts down the witch, assuming all is what it seems. It is not. After pulling the trigger, you see Ellen laughing away behind him, meaning the father just killed his daughter. I don't even know if that's the good guy being a bad guy, but I do know it's all kinds of messed up. I mean, who even thought of this? Know of any other games where the good guy is actually the bad guy or a massive tool? Let me know in the comments below and please do like the video, share the video and hit that subscribe button because the more subscribers I get, the more self-worth I have. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at SimonMiller316 and yes I do have a Patreon, patreon.com forward slash SimonMiller316 because let's face it, unless I'm doing hundreds of thousands of views, I'm making jackal on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching though and I will talk to you all again very soon.